Okay, so today's content comes after me putting hours into a script and editing another video, only for me to scrap that video and come up with a simpler, cleaner version of that video. You could say I scrapped hours of valuable work. Which is kinda like what happened with this game. Alright, I'm not gonna lie, what was released on the 30th of September is nowhere near close to what I would have wanted to see Cube World become after 6 years of development. The overall community sentiment seems to be in the same boat. There's negative reviews flying in from the Steam store, PC Gamer and Kotaku also didn't favor the game's release and in Metacritic it sits at a fat 2.2 average user review score. But why? Why is it that the game is not living to expectations? Should you, as a paying customer and as a fan of what was shown in 2013, not have expectations about the game's official release? The game changed a lot, it looks like the alpha, it plays like the alpha, it sounds like the alpha, but it scrapped a good chunk of the things that made the alpha special. There is no skill tree, there is no experience, there is no traditional leveling up, your gear is region locked, your boat, your glider and riding your pet are also region locked. You collect artifacts and that is how you progress now. The game sells itself as an exploration RPG. The idea is to pretty much explore the world, engage with enemies around your gear tier and avoid the stronger ones until you earn better gear. This does not work as well as it's intended. Enemies above your gear tier will annihilate you in seconds. Very rarely will you find a single wandering enemy for these tiers, as they almost always move around in packs. As a melee character, you're forced to face enemies in close quarters combat. Ranged enemies will rip you apart before you get close, even while on your same gear tier. Eventually though, you earn some gear that allows you to tackle harder content. Earning gear is a mixed bag because even while playing solo, loot and quest rewards are not guaranteed to be for your class. You may come across blue shoulders, but you have to pray that they are for your character. This effectively makes gearing a chore because not only do you need upgrades, you need the gear to be for you. A very lucky person can find a yellow weapon after killing a couple monsters once they began playing the game and clearing a region will be an absolute breeze to them. An unlucky one will spend hours on green and blues because they cannot find something better and the experience may become frustrating for them. Then there is the matter of combo chains. Some enemies, like bosses, will not take any damage outright and you need to build up a combo chain to hurt them. The problem with this is that in some cases you need to deal a chain of more than 40 hits in order for the enemy to start taking damage. Miss a single hit and it's back to dealing zero damage. This makes combat a chore and not rewarding at all as enemies still take lots of hits to go down. Now let's talk about the artifacts. These are the things that allow you to progress. They do not grant any any sort of combat enabling upgrades, they give minor buffs to traversal mechanics or they allow you to do certain things freely in the region where they were found. For example, climbing spikes make climbing free of stamina, but you cannot use them outside of the region where you found them, you have to find them again. Another example is riding your pet. The artifact is bound to the region, but get outside of said region and you somehow forgot to ride an animal. As for the buffs, a slightly brighter lamp radius or less stamina spent when diving sure as hell sound like something you'd want to chase, especially when you spawn in a region that has no ocean region nearby. Now let's go back to talking about monsters, specifically killing monsters because you don't get any XP whatsoever from committing mass genocide on the region's residents. Do you know how much more you get from killing yellow enemies? 3 coins. How much do you get from white enemies? 2 coins. Now this is important because there is also crafting in the game and you will eventually earn the recipes for yellow tier gear. Yellow tier wants diamonds. Diamonds are pretty difficult to find and a full set of yellow tier wants up to 20 diamonds. There is an NPC type that can spawn wandering around called gem vendor. They sell diamonds for 800 coins. If you do the math, you need around 16,000 coins for a full set of yellow gear. Do you have the patience to kill 8,000 monsters for that? Or you can sell all the loot that you find, but good luck getting more than 15 coins per item. It doesn't even matter that the item is a yellow rare piece of equipment, it's not going to sell for more than 15 coins. But wait, because this isn't the cherry on top, region locking turns your gear into great white items when you change regions. Yes, once you stop into a new one, your gear deteriorates immediately. This drops your stats as well. If you were deleting hard enemies 5 minutes ago, you are now struggling with the common ones again. 
you can circumvent this mechanic by getting gear plus. Gear plus is no different from any other gear but it can move with you from a region to the next. I say that region because it eventually gets the same treatment as regular gear. This mechanic is like duct tape to fix a water leak. Yeah, it works the first time but the longer it goes without it being treated the more duct tape it requires. Yeah, you found gear plus, but if you want to keep using a specific piece of gear throughout multiple regions, you need to find more of it. Gear plus doesn't drop once you complete a region or once you have a certain number of artifacts. It's random, and just like regular gear, it can drop for any other class that is not the one you're playing. You know, I can poke fun at this all day, point out stuff that makes no sense to me in a game like this. But at the end of the day, it's useless to do that when we don't know what's gonna happen in the future. I understand that at the end of the day, it's Wally's choice to release the game in any shape or form that he considers appropriate. But the general feedback, mine included, does not agree with what he released as official game. In my opinion, a good chunk of the things that changed from 2013 to this version are not very well implemented. You are punished for exploring because tough enemies can and will kill you on the spot while running around. Your gear matters very little because if it's not gear plus, it's not coming with you to the next region. Artifacts are not very useful right away and even then they don't really provide cool benefits. They should allow you to upgrade something of your liking, like how leveling and Skyrim allows you to upgrade life, magic or stamina. Gear should not drop for other classes if you're playing solo, that's dumb, as there is no stash to pass it to other characters. Quests are the same in every region and the only thing that changes is the setting. Wally himself has been very quiet since the release. I don't think this is very positive for the image of the game, as the criticism has been pretty loud and there is a lot of very good and very well structured criticism out there for the game. I don't expect the game to change, but I also don't expect people to change either. If we didn't have any base to build an expectation from, I don't understand that we would have no reason to complain. But we had a playable alpha, we had a roadmap for the game's development, and there were screenshots and videos of the game's development throughout the years in Wally's social media. I don't know about you, but I personally cannot fathom how did he throw years of development out of the window on the grounds that we used to have an alpha and alphas change. To me, it's an extreme change that, would it have taken any feedback, maybe then the game's situation wouldn't be so perplexing. As my closing thoughts, I'm pretty disappointed that this is the state that Cubeworld released in 2019. The alpha had so much potential and there were plenty of us who loved what was offered initially. I cannot fathom how he scrapped everything in favor of what we have today. But then again, the developer never addressed feedback and by the looks of it, I don't think we'll get any other updates in a while. Anyways, that's it for today's content, if you enjoyed the video be sure to drop a thumbs up and subscribe, that's always welcome. Opinions are also welcome in the comment section, I think this game's situation is great for discussion, so I want to discourage you from expressing your thoughts. With that said, thanks for watching and I'll have more content on the channel soon. Peace.